Today is very special to me. On this day, 10 years ago, I sent Mallory a message on AOL Instant Messenger. It said, I like you. A lot. Mallory responded, I like you too. And it was that conversation that was the beginnings of what has now lasted 10 years. I've spent 10 years with Mal, and it's been, hands down, the best experience of my life by a large margin, and it has forever changed my life in the absolute most positive way. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk a little bit about our relationship, um, some of the beginnings, and um, kind of give you a little overview about how I felt about our our relationship over these over this decade. We've been together for a decade. Um, now, one unfortunate part of this vlog that we'll be missing is Mallory. Um, if you guys have been watching the, the last few vlogs, you'll know that Mallory is currently in Wisconsin um, because she wanted to, to be there for her father, uh, who is having, who, who just finished having this uh, immense heart surgery. Uh, he's doing okay, by the way. He's recovering. It's going to take him quite a while to recover, but that's where she is, and she'll be home tomorrow. So it's unfortunate unfortunate that we couldn't spend our 10th anniversary together, but I'm I'm glad that she's there with him. So maybe we'll get her input uh, at some point in the near future. So let's talk a little bit about um, about the relationship that uh, Mal and I have had. Uh, also, by the way, hello and welcome to Thursday. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start, let's let's back way up. Let's talk about. Uh, where the relationship between Mal and I actually started, because I'm sure some of you don't know. I've talked about it on vlogs and Q&As and stuff before, but a lot of the vlogs are like super dated. Let's give an updated version uh, with details that hopefully match the last one, because my memory gets foggier every single year, but maybe I'll be able to recall uh, a few things. So we have been dating for 10 years, and uh, how we met was on a website called Starman.net, which is a the it's the website uh, for Earthbound fans. It is a huge fan site de uh, dedicated to the 1995 Super Nintendo game Earthbound. And uh, I had been a member of that site for a long, long time. Um, fairly well established in the community. People knew me for doing um, all sorts of different things, mostly Earthbound related videos. But in 2007, I started doing a radio show with some of my friends, and that radio show was called Fobbies or Borch. And it's it's basically a funny rewrite of the events that happened in Earthbound. And me and my friends would perform this live on radio. And that term probably sounds unfamiliar, radio. Um, I don't mean that in the sense of, you're kids and don't understand what the radio is. I mean, what do you mean, internet radio? So. Internet radio used to be a thing, and the, the, the closest that I could explain it is imagine Twitch, but there's no visuals. It's just audio. There were a few members uh, on Starman who were DJs, basically, and they would have like a 90-minute time slot once a week, usually on the weekends, and they would play music, and they would have their own funny skits, and they would do this, that, or the other to be entertaining for 90 minutes, and members of the Starman community would tune in to that and listen, and they would join a IRC chat room where everyone could talk together. So it was basically an early version of Twitch, but instead of streaming games, people were just streaming music. So I, uh, I, I was not a DJ. Fun fact, uh, that's how I know Chaz, for those of you who know Chaz from Stephen and Friends and uh, other videos. Um, Chaz was one of the DJs. Um, but uh, one of my friends, Jammy, uh, had their own slot. They were one of the, the DJs. So we concocted this this show, Fobbies are Borange, and we were performing it once a week, Saturday, either Fridays or Saturday nights. Uh, one of the people that was listening in at the time was Mallory. And uh, Valerie was, you know, in the chat room with everyone else. And uh, 
radio did not bring in a ton of people, although you have to understand, back in the day, there was not a ton of people using, doing things like this on the internet in the first place. Uh, Fabius of Orange actually brought in more people than usual. We probably had pretty consistent uh, listenership of, uh, like, maybe 40 or 50 people, which is t- which was a ton for radio. Radio did not generally average that many people, so to have uh, that many people was, uh, was something. But uh, Mallory was there, and um, whenever we were doing our script writing for Fabius of Orange, um, it would be me and uh, Jamie and some of the other people that were performing on the show. We would do the script writing, and then after the script writing was over, we would just hang out and talk. And uh, after a while, we started to bring in some other people just to hang out and chat on Skype. One of those people was Mallory. So we got a chance to actually chat with Mallory. Um, So I remember back in the day, it would be like me and Jamie and a a few other people, Chaz, Mallory, and we would do things like watch uh, Hell's Kitchen. There There was like episodes of Hell's Kitchen somewhere, and... Uh, we would load it, or maybe it was on the TV and everyone just watched the TV at the same time. I don't remember. A million years ago. So, like, we would, like, watch Hell's Kitchen and, like, chat on Skype at the same time, etc. And over time, um, that group kind of got a little bit smaller. Uh, and, like, we would do things with the big group, but then sometimes we'd do things with, like, a smaller group. And it would be just, like, me and, like, Jammy and, um, like Mao and her uh, roommate at the time, which was Steph. So it would it got a little bit smaller, a little bit more intimate, so we could chat uh, without so many people. And uh, over time, I kind of developed a thing for Mallory. And there's a big part of this story that I think is super important. And uh, it's the fact that when I went to college, I was not interested in love. I was not interested in love. I was not interested in a relationship. I could care less if I had a girlfriend, and I was serious about that. And the reason is, when I was in high school, there was a girl I was quite interested in and pursued, and ultimately, the feelings were not reciprocated, and I was rejected. And I was I was fine with that, but also it stung. You know, it really hurt. And when I made that transition from high school to college, um, you know, I got over that, and I got over her, uh, but I also told myself, I don't want to feel like this again. You know, that that was a, a really bad experience for me, and it really hurt, and I I really don't want to have to deal with that. So when I go off to college, I'm just going to focus on college. You know, I'm going to focus on being a filmmaker. So that was the mindset, and I, I did a great job with that mindset because I, I went to school, and for that first quarter, I, I really didn't care. You know, I... There was, uh, there was a lot of girls at college, there was a lot of girls in my classes, and I, I really didn't pay them any mind at all. I, I could care less. So I was doing a good job of, of uh, abiding by you know, the rules that I had basically set for myself. But whenever uh, I, I started to get a little bit closer to Mallory, I felt that start to kind of slide away. This hard, callous shell that I'd built up because I had um, you know, been rejected and said, oh, I, I really don't like that feeling. I'm, I, I don't want to experience that again. That started to fall away. And, uh, I realized that this person, uh, Mallory was someone who, you know, I had so much in common with and, uh, had a lot of interest with, etc. And, um, I started to chat with her just kind of one-on-one. Uh, so not only were we doing Skype stuff with everyone, but, um, and, and no one had webcam, by the way. That's, like, not even a thing. Um, the bandwidth... Well, I'm guessing the, the bandwidth in college could have supported it, but this was just voice. This wasn't even, like, webcam. Um, but uh, we were we were starting to chat a little bit on... AOL Instant Messenger was the thing at the time. So we were chatting a little bit on that. Um, we would... I, I don't think we ever Skyped one-on-one, because I think that would have been really forward, but we started to chat a lot on uh, AOL Instant Messenger. And I started to develop feelings for Mallory. And it was a really bad thing to me. Like, it was something that I didn't like because I remembered in high school, you know, that 
I had developed feelings for someone and, you know, whenever I put that out there, it was not reciprocated and, and how bad it felt. And, and all those terrible feelings came floating back. And um, I was very scared. I was very scared. In fact, I remember, and I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but I remember very vividly one day where I walked to class and I had to walk so far because the campus, um, where the campus was, is, is spread out all throughout Savannah, Georgia. So you can't, <laughs> you if you want to get from one place to the other, you're, you're best off like biking or taking a bus or driving. Walking for specific routes is like crazy. But I walked because I didn't have a car at the time. And um, I, I remember walking to class and I had all this stuff on my mind. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And I, I very vividly remember lis listening to System of a Down like super loud. It, that's such a weird memory. But I, rem I, had, I, I had these like huge headphones that I wore. And um, I remember walking to class and just being very almost angry because I had developed these feelings and I was just so worried that these feelings would not be reciprocated and I would just end up hurt again. So around this time, uh, Jamie started to know this or, or maybe I told Jamie, I don't remember. And uh, we talked and uh, basically Jamie played undercover spy and uh, she was able to discover <laughs> through however it means that um, Mao also seemed to have some feelings for me. And I honestly, I needed that. And I, I hate to feel like I couldn't just put myself out there, but I, I had to, I needed a spy. I absolutely needed a spy. And it was, it was just because I was so scared of, of getting hurt again. And um, after I, after I found that out, I developed the courage to actually do something about it. And um, it was a little while, but um, there was probably a span of like a week where I had, I knew, you know, I knew that from what I had heard, Mallory also liked me. So we started talking more and more and more, like a real, a, a quite a bit. Um, started to learn more about each other, more than we had ever, you know, known before. And then it was this day, it was March 8th. 2008 that I sent the message to Mallory and there's a vlog that talked a little bit about about this but um, I was chatting to Mal we had people over in our dorm they were playing Melee Brawl had not come out yet people were getting really excited for the re release of Brawl so they were playing a lot of Melee and um, I said I like you a lot. And Mal said, I like you too. And I said, I have so much to say right now, but all I can hear are Lincoln Pikachu, which was the truth because they were playing Melee in the background and it was so loud. And uh, that was the beginning of our relationship. Shortly after that, uh, I I said, you know, this is great. I had a webcam. I just never had a chance to use it because no one ever wanted to do that sort of thing. Um, I said, you know, this is crazy. You know, if we're if we're going to talk, we're going to spend time on Skype. We should be able to see each other. So I bought Mal a webcam and had it shipped to her. So, um, you know, between classes and evenings, etc., we'd actually see each other and talk. And um, we were in a long distance relationship for a long time, years and years and years. But it was. It's not something I regret because we, the only thing that you can do in those relationships is communicate. And because of that, we got to know each other extremely well. And um, I'm not in any way, shape or form going to say that a long distance relationship is inherently better than a, a traditional relationship. I won't say that because it's not true and different people need different things. But for me, it was fantastic. Um, because we got a chance to really, really get to know each other. Now, of course, the downside is that we didn't get a chance to physically be together, and that is hard. So we started planning every single trip that we could possibly afford as poor college students uh, to see each other. Um, 
And, you know, we got together this day 10 years ago, but it was actually, it was not until that summer, until June, three months later, that we got a chance to actually meet in person for the first time. Um, I flew up to Wisconsin and spent a week with Mal, and I was worried. I was a little worried, because that was the first time that we, that we would be together in person. And, I mean... Things things can be different in real life, and I was I was acutely aware of that. She was aware of that, and it was one of those things like I have really fallen in love with this person online. I have gotten to the point I'm spending basically every waking moment that I'm not working, not in class, I'm spending talking to Mal. I mean, that's all we did, um, and uh, there was there was definitely some worry that you know what if. What if we've we've gone through all of this and our hearts break when we are in person together and we find out that there's some incompatibility, you know? And I was I was a little worried about that. And then also I had people, mainly acquaintances, uh, who you know very very much ripped me about the fact of going up to see this person because it was like they're from the internet they could be anyone what are you doing you're crazy and i'm like ah oh, it's not how that works <laughs> we've been video chatting i i'm pretty sure i got this under control um and i remember i remember my mom um my mom was my mom was she's a mom so you know she's cautious about all this but she um she was very excited for me. She had had a chance also to talk to Mallory um, briefly because I remember uh, all of this started and I, I told my mom and uh, she, I had, I had already had a long history with the internet so she was excited for me and uh, at some point, maybe a month or so after Mal and I had started dating, um, mom had visited college and uh, got a chance to also video chat with Mal just a, a, just a little bit, probably enough just to say hi. Anyway, so I went up to see Mal, and uh, it was fine. It was it was fine. Um, it was it was incredible. It's, I almost I almost want to start crying. It was um it was a <laughs> it was a really amazing experience to um, to have spent three months you know, doing nothing but talking to someone, um, and getting a chance to know them better than you've ever known anyone. And, uh, and then to, to be in person and, and find out that you're super compatible. Like it's, everything was just great. And, uh, I, there's a million individual tiny stories to, to tell within that trip alone. But, um, I, I saw Mal in June, um, and then in July, uh, we both met up for the Starman.net convention. Um, convention. Imagine ChefCon. It's basically what it was. Uh, we would rent a big, big house. There was that convention specifically was pretty big. It was like 40 people. It's basically staff, moderators, etc. And uh, me and Mal were there together, so we got to spend. A week in June, a week in July, and then in August she came to visit me, so she got a chance to meet my family and uh, get to see Myrtle Beach and see where I grew up. So, so that summer, my second. So that summer we spent out of the entire three months we spent three weeks together, and uh, after that August ended we went back to school. We knew that it was going to be hard because we had had a chance to see each other and we had to say goodbye for a long time this time. It was going to be many, many months before we saw each other again. Uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't see each other again until that Christmas. So going from August until that Christmas was really, really difficult. But we made it. And we continued to make it. And I, I think one of the things that I've enjoyed about our relationship is that um, we have been able to be encouragement for others who are currently in a long-distance relationship whether it's someone that you met online, or maybe it's uh, a situation where your uh, maybe your spouse or something is in the military and they're overseas, uh, and you're just having trouble being apart from them, I think that we've been helpful. Um, just because I've I've read so many comments and, and things over the years uh, that we've we've helped people get through this, or or helped them believe that when they found someone online that they could make it work. 
you know, they're in college. They're also poor college kids. They can't, you know, see each other all the time. They live too far away. But they have hope um, because of the fact that Mal and I made it. And that means so much to me. Like, it, 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 I love being that person. I love being that couple for others because you can do it. And I'm not going to tell you it's easy. It's hard. It's really, really hard. Uh, but it's so worth it. And um, again, there's no perfect relationship, but for what, for what our relationship was, uh, being able to communicate all the time was just fantastic. And uh, I've said it before, but we really did communicate all the time. Uh, that was basically all we did. Uh, if we weren't in class, if we weren't working on, on something, even sometimes even if we were, we basically left Skype on all the time. And it got even better, worse, uh, whenever whenever we uh, were in junior, well, even in sophomore year, uh, but also junior and senior year, whenever I had like my own room, Mal was just basically on you know, all the time, you know, my, my girlfriend and eventually fiance just lived in this box in, uh, in my room, but we made it work. And, uh, that was the beginnings of, of all of our relationship. And it, it took forever to explain. And I, this was not my intention, but, um, for anyone who's never heard that story before, that's the story. Um, two fans of the mother series who started talking and realized we were really compatible, started e-dating after three months met in person, said, oh wow, this is great, and then kept it going through a long distance relationship through many years until we both got out of school and got married. That's been our, that's been our life. And we got married in 2011 and um, moved to Columbia. Things were definitely a little rough at the beginning. Um, our relationship was good, but there was a huge stress on our relationship because of work because of the fact that I was having trouble finding work because this was before YouTube. I mean, I was doing YouTube, but this was before YouTube really presented itself as a viable option for me. Um, so I was looking for work in my field with my degree and I could not find anything and it was really disheartening. And then Mao was in a terrible job. Uh, I'm sure some of you remember and know the situation there, but she was a teacher in an elementary school in Colombia, and it was it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. The kids were were stomping on pencil sharpeners to get the razor blades out to cut each other. They were elementary kids, like second graders. Mal would come home every single day crying. So there was a lot of uh, mental anguish that first year, and. Um, it was it was difficult not it was difficult on our relationship not because of our relationship but because of this outside stimuli it was affecting our relationship and um, it was difficult and uh, whenever I decided to pursue YouTube full time you know I had that conversation with Mao and said this is going to be hard this is something where I'm starting to see the glimmer of like this could be maybe real money like a like an actual job. And uh, I said that at the time, you know, when I made, I don't know how much money in a month, um, something super small, like $250 or something. And that was shortly after we got married. But, but I had seen the increase and I was like, Mal, I, I want your blessing to pursue this, you know. Um, I want to pursue this to try and, and make this into a thing, but it's, it's going to be hard and I'm not going to bring in much. And uh, she said go for it. But uh, I also know that that put a strain on our relationship. Um, I remember, you know, the, the, her, her, she'd be so exhausted from work and she would come home and she'd go to bed um, early and I would stay up and, and work on stuff for, you know, the, the channels. And uh, the first, I'd say the first six months of being married were, were a little difficult. Um, never anything that was like super bad. There was never, there was never anything where it was like, Oh, are we going to stay together? That was never on the, on the radar, but it was just tense. Um, and a lot of it had to do with work, my, from my work and her work, but things got better. And one of the reasons that things never completely fell to pieces, uh, was because that we had a few rules 
in the house. We, we've had a few rules since we started dating, um, and we've kept them forever for these 10 years. And uh, the first one is to never go to bed angry. I feel like that's a great rule. And it leads into the second rule, which is communicate. Always. Always communicate. Talk about everything. Every single little thing in your life. Um, how you're feeling. How certain things make you feel, whether it's from that other person or just in general. Um, talk about your, your deepest, darkest secrets. Don't hold anything back from this person. And uh, that's the way we've operated for 10 years. And when you communicate, you won't go to bed angry because you will want to discuss why you're upset. You know, what did the other person do? So we have lived by that for 10 years. Um, even when we were dating, even if we said something to each other online that, I don't know, rubbed the person the wrong way, we would still talk about it and, and work through it. And... Um, that has been a staple in our relationship, a staple in our marriage, and I, I think that it's so vital. Uh, again, different strokes for different folks. What, do whatever works for you, but I think that honesty is a necessity in, uh, in a marriage, and we talk about everything. Everything. You might be saying, even, even this? Yeah. Even this? Yeah literally everything. There's nothing off the table and nothing should be. And uh, I think if you find someone that you truly love, there's no reason to have anything off the table anyway, because you feel comfortable talking to them about anything at any time. And um, once we got through that first year, we left Columbia. We had moved to Columbia for Mal's job, but that job was killing her. So even without any job prospects, we moved back here to Myrtle Beach, which was my home. And um, it was probably the best decision we ever made. The job fell into place. Now got, got another job. Um, YouTube stuff started to pick up, where I still wasn't making anywhere near as much as Mal was. Not that teachers make a lot, but I was starting to contribute a little bit more. And uh, over time, things got better. We continued to work very, very hard, but we've always also continued to work very, very hard on our relationship. The reason that we are so good together, the, the reason that our relationship is so strong is, I mean, for, for one, yes, we're compatible, and that's super important. You have to be physically and mentally attracted to a person, um, emotionally attracted. But the reason that it continues um, is, is communication. And uh, I always try to stress that whenever people ask about like relationship questions and Q&As, I always say, make sure that you're communicating. You have no idea how important it is. And a relationship is something that it's not like you get it to a certain level and then you did it. No, it's you have to always work at it because it will fall. You have to always make sure that you're doing uh, things for your partner that in continues to encourage communication, continues to encourage trust, so you can always be open and honest with each other about everything. Anyway, after having said all of that, um, I will say that um, having gotten out of Columbia, having moved back here, having slowly built up things, having gotten Mao out of her school, um, which was also killing her. The one here, it was just so many bad things. Getting her out of that, allowing her the freedom to do Mal Makes, uh, continuing to build up the YouTube communities that we had, um, getting support from you guys to be able to do this full-time, both of us full-time, turning it into a, a business, a company, uh, and in working towards all of this has been an incredible experience. Um, but also, I know that everything Everything that surrounds me, it, like, means, in a, this is, I hope this doesn't sound cliche or cheesy or anything, it, it means nothing to me. Nothing. Like, I work really hard. Some of you know this. I work really hard, and it is, it is for that woman. <laughs> it is for our future. It is for, it is for us. 
Um, I, don't get me wrong, I love what I do. I love what I do, and I, I am so very passionate about the, the things that I create and, and put on the internet for people to watch and enjoy and, and, and entertain. But my driving force, bar none, every single day that I get up and I work as hard as I can is Mallory. My, my, my greatest wish is for everyone to find something in life that gives them the same, the same level of happiness that Mallory gives me. Whether that is a person, whether you find someone special in your life or you find a career or you find uh, a hobby or something that brings that you are so very passionate about that you work towards uh, whatever it is I, I hope that you find it because um, I, because I found it anyway Mal you're not here so I get to, to say whatever I want you get you can't stop me from being mushy um I love you, and I appreciate you, and um, I love I love you, and I love our life together, and uh, I'm going to continue to work towards it. And for everyone else, thanks for watching. I have no idea how long this was. This was super long. I I, I hope it didn't come across as super rambly. I hope it was fairly cohesive. Uh, and I hope you get you got something out of it. I'm gonna go to bed. Thanks for watching. And as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?